Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community. Folsom Lake Honda. We have reached the midway mark of this 2018 high school football season, and this is where the contenders separate themselves from the also-rans. And that's what we have tonight. Two Capital Valley Conference contenders going head-to-head -head on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, Wood Creek and Antelope. Good evening. Welcome to Titan Last Stadium here on the Greece. campus of Let's Antelope High School, along seniors. with the Imperator of Analysis, Hall of Famer Jim Domino. I'm Will James. Welcome aboard. And coach, Brad we have uh, pretty much of a doozy tonight in this CBC Escorted matchup. Both Mother teams are going to be chasing Intercom, but Father tonight's Jeff. game should be hot and heavy. Well, it certainly is. Antelope comes in here three and zero in league play, four and three overall. Wood Creek, Wood Creek, come off a tough, tough loss to Intercom, but Intercom's beating everybody. So this one here is big toward whether you're going to be a contender or a pretender. And we got a great crowd here. We expect a great football game by two well-coached teams. It's senior night here at Antelope, so a little extra festive occasion here but tonight if we take a look a year back at the last meeting between these two squads one of several tight games these teams have matched up for and it was Antelope emerging with a key win well Antelope came out with a 35 30 27 key victory and both teams scored four rushing touchdowns however Nathan Lacero came through with a group with a big 36 yard touchdown pass coming down the wire to Panola to provide the difference. Well, the last outings for these two squads, very similar in the scores, but opposite results, as Wood Creek would certainly attest, Jim. Oh boy, Wood Creek uh, ran into a very fast, elusive intercom squad that's unbeaten. Intercom amassing 482 yards, having a 30-0 halftime lead, and coasting with that running clock all over Wood Creek. Meanwhile, at Antelope, Bella, uh, Antelope entertained Bella Vista, and the Titans exploded for 41 unanswered points in the first quarter, and seven in the second quarter and third, and running clock just finished out into a, a total rally. Well, I'm led to believe that the Broncos would prefer a different type of <coughs> entertainment, but that's the way it was last week. Now, the impact players are going to be huge tonight in factoring into tonight's outcome. And for visiting Wood Creek, the T-Wolves leaders have to play super good tonight on the road as underdogs. Well, let's start with number two, Carter Krupp. He does it all. When I say do it all, he's a starting quarterback, starts at corner, Punch kicks, he does it all. He scored 13 touchdowns rushing and has passed for 13 touchdowns and does everything but drive the bus. Grant Dinger, their north-south runner up the middle, has had a huge year over 600 yards and nine touchdowns. Matt Wolliford, a highly recruited big tight end who starts on defense as well, and one of the top linebackers in the league, Danny Castillo. 
Well, for Matt Ray's four and three Titans, the same applies to the Torrid Titans as they lit it up a week ago. As you saw, they need to do it again tonight. Well, Nathan Lucero leads this ball club. It's the second year he started. He's got a lot more experience, and uh, you'll see a very capable passer with a lot of confidence, great team leader. Mahari Roberts now well, missed a couple of games early in the year, but he's well now, and he can go coast to coast. Carter Sullivan, do it all. Tight end, outside backer, and pass rusher. And then, of course, Sylvester Toby, outstanding wide receiver, very gifted athlete, and also starts in that secondary. Well, well, that's the way we have it set up for you this evening here at Antelope High School on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. When we come back, we're going to join Lauren Goodman. She has a lot more on tonight's big CBC matchup. Stay with us. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, mm. the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Wow. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter, butter on, on a stick. stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking. Make them buckle up. They can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Ah! Second. Are you orange? I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Welcome to the big show tonight. Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Antelope tonight hosting, invading Wood Creek in a CBC matchup that is of some importance. Let's join our colleague down at field level, Lauren Goodman, for more on tonight's game. Well, tonight we have two teams full of coaching power. We got to start with the visiting team, the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves obviously have two heads are better than one for them. They have a two coaching head coach tandem there. One, Brad Hunkins, and the other, Kyle Stowers, with a 17-20 record thus far. They're only in their fourth season, and with the realignments that have happened, they moved to the CBC from the Sierra Foothill League, and they have started on a rejuvenation of the program. This is their best season thus far. They have a 6-0 and start. That's equivalent to their most wins in the last season, so these two coaches are definitely being an advantage for the Timberwolves. Now for the home team, the Titans are led by Matt Good Ray in his 11th season. He has an 80 and 32 overall game. record. His best seasons were back to back in 2015 Antelope and 2017, Titans. where he had records of 12 and 1. He this also has four league titles, two in both leagues that he's been section. in, and as well the as he has a 49 and 9 record since he's been in his leagues in here at, at Antelope. But he also since has a 6 and 8 playoff record. Anyone, Not too bad for Matt Ray. Now, these two teams, they're in their fifth matchup against each other. 
other. In the first four, no it was close and tight. Now, the Titans are leading 4-0, but in the last three of the four, the matchups, as you see at the bottom, have been three within three and within eight. So the games have been close, and tonight is going to be no shorter than three. Back to you, Will. Well, thank you, Lauren. Certainly, we're anticipating more of the same between these two ball clubs when we come back. We're going to take a look at uh, starting lineups and brace ourselves for the opening kickoff here on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Schaefer, a tremendous version of our Star Spangled Banner. Again, one of the toughest vocal challenges. Well, we've talked all day about the excellent weather around town and it has remained the same. Temperature at 75, just a slight whisper of a breeze. A little humid, but clear as a bell in the visibility department. So we'd have to consider this ideal for Fall football as we are getting a little bit cooler temperatures emerging, but well, in such an important CBC matchup tonight, the game officials are going to be on the spot. The NCOA has assigned veteran Ray Pulley to wear the white cap tonight as our game referee. The umpire tonight, Mark Demike Tate, Theron Caldwell will serve as our head linesman. The line judge Derek Foster and Maurice Smith will work as our back judge keeping things fair and square. And they'll have to keep up with I would say coach a swift pace. Very definitely and particularly in the case of Antelope. Not that Wood Creek is slow but Antelope traditionally has a lot of speed in that backfield and uh, with backs like Robertson, Talley and Bradley things could happen in a hurry and they can go to the house at any given place. So they got to be ready to go and be in good field pos in position. And we don't mind if they're in position to make that call, Will. We don't like it when they're not in position. Well, kicking off for Antelope, Ben Moreno will do the booting from our left to our right. And a pair of dangerous deep receivers deployed by the visiting Timberwolves, particularly Peyton Allen, number four, as we are ready to kick this game off. It's a short, high pooch toward the right sideline. <laughs> Fair caught and excellent field position upcoming for the Timberwolves. Let's take a look at that Wood Creek offense led by one of the more versatile performers in the region, quarterback Carter Krupp. He'll be working with ace running back Grant Dinger 
There you see the race to their deployment in the backfield with triple wide receivers. And don't forget about tight end Matt Wilford and the interior line anchored there by Ordaz and Reinig. So we're ready for first play from scrimmage. From the 45 yard line. Right side running, they get, I should say the 35 yard line. Short gain of a couple, make it second eight upcoming. Sullivan at defensive end is gonna anchor a lot of that front there for Antelope on defense and they've got some excellent linebackers and leading tacklers in that group. Zobchuk, the leading tackler, second leading tackler to the secondary ace at the safety position, Luke Paulson. Second and eight upcoming from the 37. That didn't work. Dragged down for no gain. Unable to get outside, Carter Krupp. Well, Carter Krupp went under center that time instead of taking the snap deep. Try to hand off the dinger or fake the dinger, and nobody went to, uh, for the fake, really. There was nowhere for him to go, and I'll tell you, Antelope came off the blocks really quick. Loss of one. Make it third and nine. Probable passing down, and the first key juncture here on down and distance of the ball game. Krupp under center, and he's got Multiple wide outs to the right, three of them. Quick hit right side behind the line of scrimmage. And that will not get it done. Wilford with the grab, but he's only going to make a four yard pickup or so. It's going to bring up fourth and a long six. So from the 38, as we said, Carter Krupp does a lot for this ball club, including the punting. He's averaging 36 with a long of 42. Well, when he went to the big man, Wilford, uh, no room for Wilford to go anywhere on that near sideline. Punted toward the left side. It takes several bounces, and it's going to trickle out of bounds. An excellent punt with the roll. And they're going to spot the football at the Antelope 21. So very effective, no return. The Antelope offense, highly flammable. They're coming off a 55-point performance and led by senior QB Nathan Lucero. And he's got plenty to work with in that backfield, including Mahari Roberts and Thomas at the running back positions and the wide outs are potent as well. Paulson and Key Anderson and Sullivan, one of the better tight ends in the region and a tough O-line offering good protection. So here we go. First and 10 from the Titan 21. Their first play from scrimmage. Short yardage run off the left side. <coughs> I was impressed with that defensive lateral movement along the line with that Wood Creek front. So the defense for the Timberwolves standing tall on that play, Williford and Ordaz anchoring that front. And the backers are gonna have to really have super good games. Danny Castillo's in charge of that outfit, along with Dinger. And then the secondary, they just play three back there. Carter Krupp among them, second and nine. Turn and give straight up the gut, short yardage again, and shove back on the second down carry. And getting the carry was Bradley that time. Just a short pickup. And it's going to bring up a third and long. Let's take another look at the line blocking, it, but the defensive jamming right there. Well, good team pursuit with Ben Santiago Kemp, Ordaz, and company getting to the football pretty quick. Big third down. Third and four from the Titan 27. Incomplete, tossed out to the left sideline. A miscommunication on that. It was well, intended Lucero, for Paulson, but he was uh, going upfield. He was. Lucero anticipated either on a curl or comeback route, and uh, 
as you said, receivers go up the field, putting Antelope uh, now in a punting situation, and uh, that's two of them in uh, three downs in punt. Well, Moreno to do the booting. Deep to return, Peyton Allen, number four. And he's gonna have some company back there. He'll be joined there by Max Page. High snap, it's a fake to the outside, a first down and a whole lot more. Beautiful call right there. The Timberwolves unprepared for that. Beautifully done right there. Well, And I'll tell you, you know, Bradley showed a nice burst on that. Well, he did, and you know what? I don't know. Apparently, they didn't scout that because Coach Ray has been known to run that fake punt, and I recall him doing that several times a season. Have a look here. A direct snap, and one of the keys there, that's a great burst by, by uh, Bradley going up the field. He does have the speed, I'll tell you that. Gain of 20 on the play. Fresh set of downs from the 47. Not this time. Dropped for a one-yard loss on a beautiful defensive job there on that tackle. They tried to get outside with the run, but nothing doing as Paulson came roaring up from the secondary, their leading tackler. I should say Derek Taylor. Nice wrap up there. It was a nice open field. Nice open field. Look at this. Watch Taylor keeping his feet moving. Good hit. Nice. Okay, they lose a yard on the play. We'll make it second and 11. Spotted at the 46 of Antelope. Split backs this time behind Nathan Lucero. Big hole right side. A nice chunk there. Roberts down the sideline. Finally shoved out near the 25. A big gain. 28 yards on that burst. Mahari Roberts. Another look, a gaping hole off the right side. It's an off tackle. Robert's in the running lane. There's a missed tackle. Watch Robert going along the sidelines. Knocked out of bounds down the field by Dinger. Ball spotted at the Wood Creek 27 yard line. Titans on the move early. Cashing in a fourth down fake punt to keep the drive alive. A fake and a give. Right side running, picking his way very sweetly. Nice job on that as Henley, who's had some real nice moments running the football. Well, talk about his average. He's got 106, 116 yards and only 10 carries coming in here tonight. Watch Henley here. Get in the running lane. Nice move. Cutting inside. Following his blocking. There's a huge running lane there. And Wood Creek, <coughs> Wood Creek better do something about it because I'll tell you what. Um, that running lane is huge, and those backs are hitting it with great timing. Well, Ray Pulley is going to explain the penalty situation. Didn't get a clarification. However, it's still going to be spotted at the 27, but a stoppage now, an official stoppage for probably a clarification to the Wood Creek bench. Officials timeout. And we can take this opportunity to break down the keys there are always special keys to every game, and the Imperator has logged the keys for tonight's big CBC showdown. Well, let's start with that Titan speed, and you've seen evidence of that in a couple of plays on that fake punt there. Big play threats, and they do. That's going to be a big challenge tonight for the T-Wolves. That flex bone spread, uh, hopefully using the clock thus far. It hasn't worked for Wood Creek. They turned it over. And now the second thing is the Krupp Dinger Show. Can they put it together and test that Titan defense? Because as Krupp and Dinger go, so do the T-Wolves. Still further explanation on the far sideline to the co-head coaches guiding the Timberwolves, Kyle Stowers and Brad Hunkins. Now Ray Pulley over toward the Antelope bench. And we're going to resume play here. 
737, still early on, first quarter. Nice to have you with us for tonight's hometown sports game of the week. Play fake, Lacero throws, wide open, touchdown Titans on a strike to Bradley. Textbook coming out of the timeout. It was, and if you watch, uh, if we get another look at that eventually, why we're going to see that Wood Creek was coming with a big pass rush with everyone coming, and they isolated on a single receiver, Bradley, wide open. Ben Moreno on for the PAT. Booted. And got it at 7.34 first. 7 nothing Titans. Here's how. Here it is. Lucero hits Bradley on the run. Nobody there. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Okay, we're set for the ensuing kickoff here by Antelope's Ben Moreno after the Titans struck first with a 27-yard aerial connection. Short pooch taken inside the 30 and a short run back crossing the 35. So again, good field position upcoming for Wood Creek down by seven. Well, uh, I guess they feel they can't get a touchback off that kickoff by Moreno. So they're gonna pooch kick it and Get down the field and cover it and give you essentially no run back on it. A very pleasant, slightly humid evening here in Antelope, but ideal football conditions for both these squads and the fans here to attend. Krupp to throw, fires right, and has the short hookup, about a four-yard pickup. They're spotted at the 40-yard line, second and six. He, he goes to Habermill, a big receiver, 15. Uh, he looks a lot bigger than, uh, than shown. Three-step drop and a comeback route. Toby with the coverage and the tackle on the play. Second down upcoming. They need six to move the chains again. They angle left with the run play. And again, the fullback that time with the carry, Grant Dinger. Shy of a first by a yard or so. It'll bring up third and short. Well, Dinger picks up four or five. They need two, third and two from the 44. There's a look at secondary performer, Vlad Sobchuk, one of the leading tacklers on the Titans. Quick hit, right side, running room, breaking free to the 30 to the 20, and they can't catch him. Speed oh, to you. burn that time, and he didn't bother to look back Tyler. on the play to Tyler Panlilio. Panlilio showing a real good burst. Will they talk about antelope speed? Well, he showed you a little bit of Panlilio speed there. I'll tell you, that was a great hitch route and a pick on the far side, uh, near sideline pass. And I'll tell you, he turns it into a big play. 56 yards was big enough to get the six on for the PAT. Krupp pounds it home, and we got a 7-7 tie here at the 6:04 midway first. Another look at the scoring connection. What Panlilio? Turn it on. I'll tell you, he shows me some late speed there, Will. That was a 
90 second time of possession. We'll be right back for more of the hometown sports. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Both teams get stung for an aerial connection touchdown here. A 7-7 tie in this CBC matchup host Antelope and visiting Wood Creek. And the winner of tonight's ball game, a leg up in the standings, chasing Indercombe. High, deep boot to the goal line. Excellent downfield coverage. So below average field position upcoming for Antelope. But I tell you, a great open field tackle by Grayson Erskine. Number 72 got down the field. And for a big guy, he got down and moved his feet well, made a nice open field tackle. So we've got things settling down here at a 7-7 ball game. I would just want to comment for a moment on how well executed that pick play was on the near sideline, Will. That's as good as it gets. Tally with the short return sets up meager field position at the Titan 16-yard line as we continue here midway first. Turn and give to Roberts. He's strung and dropped. Krupp up from the secondary with help from two other Timberwolves. Santiago and getting additional help from his teammates there to shut that down for a three yard loss. Make it second and 13 here. Well, defensive coordinator and co-head coach Brad Huntkins talked about Ben Santiago Kemp, how quick he was. He's a lean outside. He's listed as a DN and he plays it almost like an outside backer. So a call timeout by the Titans. It comes at the 514. We see Matt Ray up along that antelope sideline. He's wearing the white cap. Overflow crowd here on the Antelope side. It is senior night and also the night to honor the staff. Let's take a look at the rankings. That would be Domino's dozen. Oh, well, here we got Folsom and a class of their own up top again. They've been that way for a few years. Intercom uh, right behind them with a bevy of blacks and speed. Placer plucking along. Joey Montoya's got a powerhouse. Del Oro unbeaten. Oak Ridge with only one loss to Folsom. Monterey Trail, another powerhouse. Cap Christian, Jesuit back in the hunt. Sheldon, Elk Grove, and here number 11, Antelope. And Grant will take care of that red zone a little later. Okay, back to action. After the timeout called by Antelope. Lucero, quick hitch right side. Well defended, but a broken tackle is going to lead to a first down and more. Excellent individual effort right there. And again, standing out from the rest, we had Henley taking on a tackler one on one and breaking it. Well, Max Page, number 10, found out real quickly you better wrap up. Ray Pulley clarifying things right in front of uh, head coach Matt Ray. Penalty against Antelope. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay second down. Well, they're called a holding call on that wide receiver. 
that compounds the problem here. It was a second and 13. It's going to be more like a second and 15 upcoming now after the holding call. In the danger zone are the Titans trying to break out for some field position and some breathing room. Under center this time, Lucero. He wants to throw, pump fakes, and he's going to keep it and try to work outside and does. Not quite what he wanted, but he bit off a nice chunk there, nearly 10. Well, it's a good, uh, good job by Nathan Lucero. Nobody open, and he took it upon himself, and as you said, he picked up half that yardage back. Lucero looked like he wanted to go upstairs with that and then tucked it and ran. He certainly did. He didn't force the ball, pumped that ball, and got around the corner and showed a decent speed and uh, safely protected that football going out of bounds. Gain of nine on the play. It's going to bring up third and six, a manageable down a distance. He wants to throw over the middle, complete, and it's got first down yardage written all over it. Again, coming up big, Henley with the grab, move the chains first down antelope. Well, what impresses me right now with Nathan Lucero over last year as a junior is the strength of his arm. Uh, he came over the top with a fastball, and if the Wood Creek corners continue to give the wideouts that cushion, they're going to hit a lot of comebacks and a lot of hitches. Well, Coach Ray had spoken he, uh, about his arm strength and the zip he's got, the velocity he's got compared to last year when he started as a junior. So fresh set of downs for the Titans. We're tied at seven, but Antelope on the move now. Uh, good initial opening on the hole. Roberts with the carry. So they're going to park the football just across the 30 to the 31. Gain of four, second and six upcoming. There we see the handoff to Roberts. It cuts back against the grain, picks up about three or four tough yards in there. And with second and medium, don't be surprised if he play actions right now. They're giving big cushions. Corners are giving a big cushion. On the end around, Sully breaks one tackle, breaks another. The big man won't go down across well. the 45. Sullivan showing how it's done. Well, they're going to have to do something with that tackling. Uh, and, and I'm a little surprised that Danny Castillo missed that tackle. You'll see a great ch chance here and, and missed open field tackle coming up. 15 yards on the catch and run like a fullback. Pushing out further now from their own 46. The Titans on the move here. In a 7-7 tie with CBC rival Wood Creek. Lucero straightening out his backfield. Straight ahead blast Roberts. Nice initial line surge. Yeah. Once again, uh, he picked up five, six yards in there. There is a good surge, but I'm, I'm really impressed with Lucero. Beside the arm we talked about being stronger, look at him. He's a leader this year. He runs the offense and moves people around to where they should be. Gain of five, second and five. Into Wood Creek territory from the Timberwolves 49. Lucero back under center now, has multiple wideouts to the left play fake he's chased throws nearly completed but well, you saw Dinger come up there and make contact on Sullivan incomplete well if Dinger plays the football and not man he has himself a big time pick will because that was a he's trying to throw the football away and Dinger was playing man all the way and uh, yes he covered his man but that ball was up for grabs. It was. Um, Luc um, Lucero was off his back foot. Didn't have much on that. So fortunate to get away with just an incompletion. Third and five now. Right side run. Close to a first down. Maybe a bit shy. Nice blast there. Again, Bradley quick to the hole. And they're just shy by less than a yard. Fourth and one. 
Well, yes, you know that Coach Ray will not punt here. Yep. He'll start, he'll either give you a quick count, as you see that Bradley Blass in there. Clock rolling, a minute and a half to go. Late first, and whistle stop play. Matt Ray hustles down to midfield to talk to our head linesman and get the timeout. I guess he was calling for it earlier. <laughs> well, yeah, I think he's a little upset that uh, that near official didn't <laughs> hear him. <laughs> Well, uh, we come back here, be alert, because with fourth and a foot, Coach Ray could gamble here. He is a gambler and run a play action pass for a touchdown when everybody expects a quarterback sneak or a dive. So be alert. We have seen him do it before, and that is one of the many tricks in his bag. So we'll see if Wood Creek sucks up tight or if it's a merely a long count, hoping for a line surge penalty. That would be the second option I see, Will. <clears throat> Lucero under center, looking over that Timberwolves defense. Turn and give, just enough, just enough. Roberts picks up the first, move the change, nothing sophisticated there. And here's how they got their first down. He just a dive right over his right guard and right tackle, double team, down, down block. Nice tackle in there by Peyton now, a little later. They move the chains again, nice drive. Using that clock. So from the Wood Creek 43, the drive is sustained here. Just a minute remaining here in the first. A 7-7 tie. Here's a toss, right side running. Roberts, not much there. Good run support from the secondary. Well, you watch Coach Ray run to that near sideline for a while, setting a counter back. He got more out of that than I thought, give him four. Ray going off tackle with a lead blocker. Picked up about uh, four. You're right. Second and four, ideal situation for play action and or run. Well, let's not be shy about crediting Danny Castillo with that last tackle. He's... Number 40 is an inside backer and one of the best in the area. He certainly is. <clears throat> Lucero turn and give it to Bradley. They pound the line and surge it forward nearly to the 35. They're going to be a bit short by a couple. Third and two spotted at the 35 clock rolling with 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Well, they're running behind right guard Duran and right tackle Kopchak here, and uh, they like to run that way and counter back the other way to Habibi's side and Abdullah, but uh, they're running a lot over Duran and Kopchak tonight. Big hole in there between him and that tight end Sullivan as they go strong left on us here. Let's see if they're able to get the playoff. Clock rolling with five seconds, they do. They come around <laughs> the long way around, and it does not fool Wood well, Creek. It's a loss. Carter and we Sa have played one from Titan Stadium at Antelope High School after one on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week, a 7-7 tie, Antelope and Wood Creek. We'll be back. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org.
We open second quarter action here. Antelope and Wood Creek all tied up. Uh, check of the stats compiled by Dave Larson. It shows total yardage favoring Antelope, 128 yards in that opening quarter against 69 for Wood Creek. And most of that 69 came on the scoring play. Locked in, and now Antelope on a, on a good drive going down the field, fourth and about five. Now, let's take a look. He's checking Lucero and Coach Ray are checking the amount of cushion that they're giving their twin set right here to the wide side. A key fourth down, incomplete out to the right side. That will bust this drive and Wood Creek will take over with a pretty good field position after the fourth down play is unsuccessful. Wow, there's a, I think a bit of communication there going in. I know Coach Ray is gonna stra straighten that out right now. Um, I don't believe that was a play called and he's gonna meet with his offense right now and get that squared away. Little confusion there. So Wood Creek back on the attack. Carter Krupp running the show here for the Timberwolves. Turn and give, big hole, Dinger is loose, midfield, 40, chased by one defender, and dropped just outside the 20. Wow, that was a quick opener. Well, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Krupp and Dinger, and I'll tell you, he's a good size. Boy, he hit that hole quick, and a huge hole. And the safety runs him down, thank goodness for Antelope on D. Safety tally brought him down or he scores. 43 yards on the burst by Dinger and it sets up the Timberwolves at the outer edge of the red zone. First and 10 from the Antelope 20. Krupp sends a man in motion. Inside running again. That's a great fake. Got Krupp kept the ball for about four. Well, I'll tell you the whole world tackle Dinger. So the Wood Creek QB getting kind of slick. Here's another look. Excellent ball handling by Carter Krupp. And they're opening up the holes inside the dinger. Panola with the tackle, gain of four, second and six. Motion again. Left side running, good hole off that left side. Ooh. Well, they're running that veer, and I'll tell you, there's a huge off-tackle hole. Right now, Antelope's got to do something about that because if we see that again, it's huge off-tackle. First and goal from the Antelope 5 on an 11-yard burst by Dinger, so... He's had 54 yards in his last two carries. That bench is, and they that, blast it straight ahead forward, get close, but not in. Okay, they're gonna park it inside the five at the four. Second and goal from there. We've just opened second quarter action here at Antelope High School. This is a CVC matchup of league contenders. What do you see, Jim? Look at this lineman. Quickly up to the line, toss it to Dinger. Touchdown Timberwolves as he barrels in easily from four yards out. Well, that's something I like seeing. They line up in an eye, an 11 man eye. I like the what they did there. Boy, I'll tell you, Dinger finds a hole, doesn't he? Uh, he's big and strong and nimble there as you saw him step over a tackler. So Krupp on for the PAT out of the hold of Peyton. Peyton Allen as the T-Wolves have taken the lead. Blocked! Excellent defensive play to limit that, however. Okay, 
Dinger gets in for the go-ahead TD, and we'll show you why this is an important game among these CBC contenders as we look at the Capital Valley Conference standings here after. Look, take a look at this, because we got quite a battle going on. Inter come on and beaten playing tonight. Antelope 3 and 0 coming in here tonight in league play. Wood Creek 2 and 1 needing a victory here tonight to stay right in contention. Yuba City with one loss, River Valley with one loss, Roseville Bella Vista. And those top teams are all playing one another here in the next two to three weeks. Intercom, Antelope, Wood Creek, Yuba City, River Valley are all going to be meeting. And there's action around town with the rest of the Capital Valley Conference teams that will have bearing on how the teams move after tonight's results are in. The CBC slate, a full slate, with the exception of one team with a bye, and there you see it's Roseville sending it out this week. Well, Roseville with the break and River Valley and Intercom playing as we speak. So Carter Krupp living up to his awesome credentials has guided his team from a 7-0 deficit to consecutive TDs to take the lead. At the six. Nice hole on the run. Stiff arm there to break a tackle. What a run back there by Henley. Very dangerous. Beautiful return right there. Not good downfield coverage. Well, yes, you're exactly right. Henley with a great return, and I'll tell you, poor coverage on the lanes. And watch him get outside, inside, and off he goes, and they lost containment. And he got around several people, puts them in great field position. Nice opening block there by Mahari Roberts to help spring him. So from the 35, first and 10 for the Titans, trailing now 13-7 after leading it early, 7-0. Nate Lucero turn and give to Roberts, trying to find some daylight to the right, but very little. Give him a yard. Well, you know, they've got these breakaway backs, but right now I'm watching the interior line play here in midway in the first quarter and on into the second quarter, and I'm seeing an improvement on the Wood Creek side and kind of a, a, a little bit of letdown on the offensive front of, of uh, Antelope that's got to pick it up. Second and nine. Out to the left side. Henley, I'll tell you, they better put someone on <laughs> the Z-Man. <laughs> First down, Titans. Well, they do, and the corner play, they've got to pick it up. They're playing a three-deep corner, and quite honestly, um, they're wide open, uh, really. They're given a golden opportunity to those receivers. They can run short routes all they want, and if they get the ball early, they can catch and run, okay? They can catch and run and make a, a lot more yards on those short. Right now, they're getting huge cushions. Gain of 11 on the last play. Lacero handed off. Bradley struggles to get a couple. We'll see where they gave him progress, almost to midfield, but tough D on that play. Again, Peyton Allen up from the secondary to help on that run support. We'll give him a couple. Second and eight as they spot the football well, outside the 47. Well, corners Allen and, and Krupp uh, have got to be very careful here because I know Lucero is really good. He'll run those hitches on you. Have a look at this. A simple counter back inside. And he'll pump and go on the hitch and go on the top side or on the near side. Lucero wants to throw. Wide open, Bradley has the catch at the 20. Sidesteps a man, shakes loose from another, and he's dropped at the 15. It was evident he was going that route well. Wide open, Bradley. 
having a field day so Watch far. Watch Lucero dropping back deep, going deep, getting the ball out front with Bradley, making a move here, showing you big effort. He's quite athletic. He is one dangerous receiver as well as runner. 36 yards on the catch and run. Turn and give. Tough D on the carry. Well, you don't see Thomas get the ball very often, I tell you. And he showed there that he can not only block, he gets up the short yardage, Will. Cubate Thomas, mostly known for his blocking. They spotted at the nine, second and three after the seven yards camper. Wood Creek up 13 7, but Antelope pounding on the door as they run the football to the five. Third and goal deep in the red zone. Midway second. There you see the handoff in there inside, tough yardage. Wood Creek bending a little bit, but finishing strong. Max Page helping two other Timberwolves on the tackle. Clock rolling here at the 625 midway second and Wood Creek trying to hold the fort here, but Antelope with a battering ram from the five. Turn and give left side Bradley tripped up and dropped. They weren't counting on that. Not at all. And now we got a fourth and goal coming up, I believe. Third. Well, the yard marker says I'm confused too. The yard marker says second, so they're in good shape with less than six minutes to go. Uh, somehow I missed uh, the down and distance on that. However, the run to the left by Bradley shut down nicely and whistles are going to bust this play. Coach Ray called a timeout prior to snap. So the Titans want to talk it over and So we started uh, showing the weekly rankings of Domino's dozen which includes one of these teams and then deep in the red zone there's another there we go we're going to finish that uh, top 20 or my domino dozen we gave you the first dozen so let's go to the second Rio linda having a steady season at number 13 granite bay has been up and down beer river having a tremendous year under coach logan uh number 16 wood creek you're seeing them tonight and uh they're putting on a pretty good show. This is a good football game. Colfax at 17. Ponderosa having a good year at 18. Casa Roble, a definite threat in their league. And Yuba City rebounding off a great win over River Valley last week back in the top 20. Yuba City, the honkers honking loud last week as they dropped crosstown rival River Valley. And narrowly losing to Antelope by one. Here we go from the six. Turn and give. They run it left side off tackle and make the three. Bradley getting lots of work down here in the red zone. There's give to Bradley off tackle. Picks up about three down to about the two and a half. Kristen Reinig helping on the stop there. Near the goal line, touchdown Titans. And they are back on the board. Roberts packing the gear, makes the goal line with just enough. And we are tied at 13, and it'll be Ben Moreno on for the PAT to try to push Antelope back on top. It's 
spotted, booted, and got it. 4.52. Antelope back on top as Roberts carries for the six. We're going to come right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Well, this game has taken a couple of turns. Antelope back on top by one here, a blocked PAT. The difference in this one, 14-13 Titans. On the flip side of quarter number two. Nice to have you with us. Moreno, Pooch, high and short, right side. Fair caught at the 35. And again, good opening field position for visiting Wood Creek. Well, I believe we've been on the 35 or 36 three times successfully to start that drive. <laughs> and I guess they don't mind uh, Antelope with confidence in their D. Wood Creek doesn't mind either, starting a drive from the 36-yard line. Uh, no risk, no fumble, fair catch, and no return. Movement along the line. Flags fly. It's going to cost... As you hear Ray Pulley, it's going to cost the Timberwolves five yards. First and 15 as the ball moves back to the Wood Creek 30. Double wide outs to the near side. Quarterback Carter Krupp running the show. Short drop, look right. A lob! Off the fingertips of the intended receiver, and it was right on the money for Habermill. Well, I've been impressed with Krupp pinpointing that pass, Will. That was in between double coverage, and let's take a look at how accurate this toss was. Nose up, right between them, right in the hands of Hab Habermill. Well, that was a nice fingertip break up there. And give credit to the antelope coverage down the field. Quincy Gallon with part of that double coverage incomplete. Second and 15. Wilford moves in motion, now sets up on the right side. He fakes it and keeps it Krupp to the outside. And gang tackled crossing the 35. He makes the 37 or so. He gets back the penalty yardage and a wee bit more, but it's going to bring up third and long. Watch Krupp fake the dinger. You got to respect that. Bounces it outside now. Puts his head down, picks up an additional couple of yards. He's got third and a long nine, Will. From the 37-yard line, he make, needs to make the 46. Four oh five, flip side of quarter number two. It's 14-13 Antelope in a spicy opening half so far. Krupp looks left and throws incomplete. He rushed that a little bit. He was going for Dinger. Fourth and nine. He sure did. There's no hurry on that one. Fourth and nine, Carter Krupp looking to the sideline as if there might be something on his mind other than punting. Well, I think that he's got to read the defense. If that defense turns and runs too early, he'll run. He's going to read that front five. Uh, Bradley, the solo safety. Here's the Krupp punt away from Bradley, who 
crosses the sideline, making the catch. A good punt, very effective, no return, and it pins the Titans inside their 20. Very smart football player. He checked that front line for Rush, and he also wanted to see where that punt return man was. He knew exactly where to go with the ball. Comes into the ball game with about a 37-yard average. And uh, what I like is where he places the ball and try to have no return. Yes, and he exceeded his average on that punt. It pins Antelope. They'll be working with a first and 10 from the Titan 17 yard line with 345 to go here in the first half. And we'll see what Titan head coach Matt Ray and his staff have up their sleeve here. They stay on the ground. Power running nearly to the 20, at the 20. Well, I'm seeing uh, a lot of reaching and pulling going on up front. Tyree Jenkins is tough to move, and he gives Christian Reinig a break on the defensive front. Tyree Jenkins, a sizable a lineman who gives a break, all 270 of them. And of course he starts at uh, left tackle on the offensive side. Yeah. So Roberts a gain of three, will make it second and seven, under three minutes remaining here in the half. Here's a toss, left side run. Big opening, Bradley following the blocking beautifully. Shoved out of bounds near the 45-yard line. 45-yard line, big pickup, it's a first down. All right, watch him pulling here. A lot of interference down field and uh, those linemen get up the field and there's uh, some good hand usage. Gain of 27 yards on the burst by Bradley. Lucero. Gives it to Bradley working left, 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 left. This time shut down for about a three yard gain. He makes midfield second and seven. Well, this Antelope offense uses their guards to pull quite a bit. Their left guard, Habihi, pulled on play before last, and there you saw Michael Duran, number 70, pulling, leading the way on an off-tackle play. Here we go, and here you see Duran. Uh, that's the previous play where we saw Habihi leading the way. Lucero fakes. Here comes the end around. Nearly first down yardage that time. Henley has had some important touches in this game, and that was one of them. Well, he's got the speed to turn the corner, and he's very close to moving the chains here. He's just shy, less than a yard. Watch the inside fake, handoff, run the counter wide with Duran pulling in front of him. Like I say, they lead the way with their guards, Duran and Abihi, on a lot of these off tackle and sweep plays. Doing a good job. Gain of six, turn and give. Not this time, Bradley blasted and shoved back. Oh, daddy, Danny Castillo. Well, I'll tell you, he is what he is, and I'll tell you, he's a great leader. A defensive leader, outstanding linebacker. Bradley's wondering what fell on him. He, he sure did. Now we got a fourth and half yard here. What will Coach Ray run? I believe he's out of timeouts. Clock is rolling with just a minute left. They're going to have to work and work fast. 14-13 Antelope. 
Lucero, turn and give for the money. Well, if they give him forward motion, I think he's got it barely. I think Roberts has it. Barely, very, very close. That interior line has well, uh, tightened he, up. Well, it's close. And looks like we'll have uh, a measurement. Ray Pulley, I think, wants the chains out here. Well, if they got it, it's by a nose. Well, if they're taking that long to eyeball it, why not measure? Well, they're bringing them in. 49 seconds left here in the first half. And they will measure. That's not where his foot was, I can tell you that. All right, here's the story. He's short, and the ball goes over. The turnover on downs, it's going to be Wood Creek ball. We mentioned that the CBC action around town is continuing besides this one. Right now, Indercom, as expected, dismantling River Valley and Yuba City putting it on Bella Vista. Both of them are second quarter scores. Roseville has the night off. We'll update you further. Well, Wood Creek takes over here with a short amount of time. Will they play it safe, Will, or will they try to get down the field? I think they'll try something. Krupp rolls, looks, fires to the sideline. He's got a man to the inside of the field and inside the 40-yard line on a nice hook up there. Wilford with the catch and run. First down. He took a hit at the ankle or knee, and Wil Wilford's going out. He's limping, but staying in. Start the clock, 35 seconds. Crop, roll, look, throw, broken up, incomplete. Well, what I like is Krupp wisely, he was running out of field with receivers and running out of field himself. His choices become throw the ball out of bounds, run out of bounds, stop the clock with 26 seconds to go. And I like the way he moves about. Watch Krupp rolling hard right, looking down the field, pumping, looking, and now he goes and he's very fortunate there. He didn't get picked off. Okay, picked off by Thomas. Yes, Thomas. That linebacker dropped. Uh, took a deep drop. Normally, he's a linebacker. Second and ten. Pistol formation. Short drop. Look left. Throw left for the sideline. Incomplete. Good coverage. Nice tight coverage out there. They were going for Habermill, but excellent coverage down the sideline there. Well. Right now, with those two big receivers out there uh, in Wilford and 15, Habermill, uh, they're set up for the screen inside if he wants a screen to Dinger. 21 seconds left, third and 10. At least a couple plays there. Fire right, working for the sideline and pulled down. Nice little catch and run that time. Panlilio with the grab, thrown down hard by Thomas. Well, he's got a fourth down, Will, and, and a long eight. Now, you would think that he's going to have to go to the sidelines to stop the clock unless they have a timeout left. 16 seconds. Be tough to get off two plays unless they do. Go to the sideline. Krupp has time, throws deep for the end zone. Incomplete. Double coverage out there applied on Matt Wilford. Paulson, one of the defenders, and so was Roberts. Let's take another look. Watch Krupp taking a deep drop, going deep, getting the ball upstairs to Big Wilford. And well covered. Wow, that ball was catchable. 
Paulson and Roberts with the double coverage out there. And we've seen a couple of passes now on the money thrown by Krupp, just not hauled in. Very impressive. Now, I would think, I would think at this point, not wanting to throw a pick or fumble the football, that perhaps Coach Ray, uh, but nothing would be surprised me, maybe would just take a knee. However, you got to be very careful. Uh, you, you get a turnover here, you're in trouble. Ten seconds left. I want to remind you that uh, our Lauren Goodman will be interviewing our head coaches during the intermission to get uh, their impressions of an interesting first half. Right? Well, he has that halfback pass, Will, and he uses it about once every three games. So look out. If Lacero doesn't throw, he has either Bradley or Roberts throw. Well, Lacero checking out his lineup. The Wood Creek secondary backing up. They show motion and play fake to the motion man. Throw deep left side, Bradley. Wow, look at that interception stolen away. And here's a run back along the near sideline. Carter Krupp with the theft. Still on his feet, finally dropped. He fumbles the football and Dinger comes up with it as the half plays out. Carter Krupp, and you were right, coach. Matt Ray. Going for the big one there, but it, again, that versatility demonstrated. We've talked about him all night long, and he is a specialist. He can do many things. He'll, his skill set, virtually unlimited. High C and special K, Carter Krupp, he does do it all. Passer, runner, kicker, punter, defender. Here's the defender part on that last play. A brilliant interception here. Oh, he stole it. This was beautiful. Watch this. Take it away. He takes it away from Bradley and heads up the field. And he wants to get to the end zone. Watch him. Look at the determination on this run. Bryce tackles, fumbles, Dinger picks it up. And down he goes as the half ends. What a half it was. A little bit of seesaw. Lots of exciting plays and anybody's game right now. Let's check in with Lauren Goodman. What you got, Goody? Coach, well, that was an exciting first half, half ups and downs. What's your impression of the first half? Uh, first half is we've got to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better so that Carter can stand back there, throw the ball, and then we got to get a little more push so we can run the ball. We had some pretty explosive plays, and then on defense, we've got to control the line of scrimmage and make some tackles. Coach, now you're going to make those adjustments in the first half. What do you feel like your team needs to do in the second half to be successful and kind of break away from this team? Uh, we need to make sure that we're converting on third down offensively and then stopping them on third down defensively. So it's getting off the field and staying on the field when we score. But we're or staying on the field when we have the ball. So we need to make sure we take care of that and everything's going to be good. Thank you so much, Coach. Good no luck in the Thank second you. half. Back to you, Will. Thank you, Lauren. Well, I'm quite sure that the brain trust of Wood Creek is feeling pretty good about this road trip over here to Antelope at Titan Field where they came in with an 0-4 mark against this squad. Three of the four close games and this one just as close. Now don't wander off because we're going to come back with a whole lot more during our halftime intermission of Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Maria, so how's work? It was fourth period biology. Our students just weren't getting how easily viruses spread. So Ms. Bell and I had them role play a zombie virus outbreak. By the time they had all learned the lesson, all the living were dead. Hey, how's your job going? That big sales meeting I planned? Next year, I might get to go. <clears throat> cool. Your son wants to get a cat, really but you're allergic. Do you A, prepare yourself, B, make the best of it, C squared equals 25. Good job! Or C, find a loophole. 
When it comes to parenting, there are no perfect answers, but that's okay, because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Teens in foster care will love you just the same. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Well, we're here at Antelope Wood Creek 13, Antelope 14, and now I'm here with Tino Guzman, the principal at Antelope. New principal, new to the gig. How are you enjoying the job so far? I'm loving the job. This school is so full of spirit. Um, every day I get to come to school and build positive relationships with, relationships with kids, and that's the best part of my job. Tonight is obviously eventful. It's full. Band is here. Uh, dance companies are here. How do you feel about tonight's turnout? I'm super excited. Wood Creek's now in our league, and so we're both in the same district. So now getting to play them, and they're my I'm an alumni from Wood Creek. So it's doubly exciting for me to be here, and I'm super excited. So the payback is kind of coming in now that you're on the other side. Um, tonight you guys are doing a teacher appreciation where you guys are kind of showing the teachers some love. What is that all about, and how did that come to be? So it's senior, it's it's appreciation night for a football. So a football player picks a, a teacher or a staff member, and we wear their jersey the whole day. I'm wearing number seven. Yeah, the jersey's a little tight, but I'm trying to suck my gut in. <laughs> yeah, it's just really to continue to build, build a positive culture at Antelope and build relationships. And how are tonight's events and more events that you yeah, have planned to build the community and the team. morale around here at Antelope? Well, we do a lot here in, in our Antelope community. You know we have a new performing arts theater being built right now. It'll be opening next spring. Um, Antelope, our high school, is really the hub of our community. So kids find a sense of place here. Uh, they find a sense of belonging here, and we're really proud of that. Well, thank you so much, Tino Guzman. Score Wood Creek 13 and Elope 14. We'll be right back. I'm Ferdinand. You look at me and think big. You think scary, but I'm a little misunderstood. Sorry, I almost killed you. You've all been misunderstood. You're not a fighter. Well, I don't understand that at all. Kids with learning and attention issues like dyslexia and ADHD are misunderstood too. Take the time to understand. Best plan ever. With the right support, everyone can reach their full potential because you can't judge a bull by his cover. Learn more at understood.org. They call me Prince like I'm royalty or something. But the places I've lived ain't no palaces. So I don't need grilled salmon or a new scratching post. Just give me a cardboard box and a can of tuna and we're good. You can even change my name. I'm cool being the kitty formerly known as Prince. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. 
that will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We are at the intermission at Antelope High School here on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, and we have a dandy of a ball game. It's an important CBC matchup tonight, 14-13, the hosts on top, and a little bit of a seesaw we had in that first half as Antelope struck first for the 7-0 lead, and then Carter Krupp put on a show for us, Coach Domino. Well, he certainly did, both running and throwing the football as he hit a big play to Tyler Panlelio, who went the distance on that far side on just a quick hitch. But what made that play initially was the block by the other wide receiver there springing him. And then he showed a lot of speed going down that sideline against some speedy defensive backs. That's what impressed me the most. Um, they did, in fact, he separated even more from them. That, he's maybe the fastest guy on their team. So, as you say, Krupp standing out with his, with his feet, with his arm, and near the end of the half, as Antelope was trying to go deep down the field, we saw how he could cover a speedy wide receiver. Well, we, we can see, we can see how versatile he is. Well, look and at uh, these updates, Coach. Well, Halftime half scores. We got a flash coming in here, go ahead. Well, Intercom rolling as usual. We anticipated something one-sided like that. River Valley uh, has not answered the bell yet. And Yuba City really pounding away. Uh, they, they have gotten hot here in here the, lately, in the yeah. middle of the season. And let's not forget, they pushed Antelope to a 21-20 game. So they, they've had a solid season. They have, uh, but again, um, again, you got to play the game on the field. But I, I, as you know, we've seen Intercom, and with that host of backs they have, I'm going to tell you, uh, they have so many ways to hurt you, and their defense is only giving up 6.7 points a game. Well, that is not a common stat for Terry Stark's ball club, but it's something new. We're going to come back in just a moment and rejoin our colleague, Lauren Goodman, when we return. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Well, we're here at Wood Creek 13, Antelope High School 14, and I'm here with Mark Calvo, the band director at Antelope. Now, the band has the crowd rocking. How are you enjoying that job? We're loving it here at um, Antelope. Um, tonight's special kind of night. We've invited our middle school feeder program out here, and so they're involved with us tonight in the stand, so they get an idea what the taste of high school culture in the high school band is like, so they have to support the community, support the school. It's a blast. So a lot of people don't usually recognize how much work the band has to put in. They usually work as hard as the football team. Can you kind of go into detail about that? They do, uh, not just physically, but the, obviously the mental part of the game and what we do in our competition. It's a very competitive group as well. We have our own season of full marching competitions that we compete in throughout the Northern California area. And that's been great. Um, Time-wise, they're here three nights, four nights a week. They'll put 16-hour days in here at school because they're here at zero period before school until 9.30 at night rehearsing. So it's a great group, and they work really, really hard. So what are the advantages or the opportunities students get that participate in band? How special is it? Uh, to us, with our culture, it's really special because it's not about the notes. 
it's not about the music. It's more about the life skills that they learn in the band program. It's not, you know, hey, we're going to earn first place or second place at a competition. For us, it's about what are they learning and are they moving forward as, as young adults and learning how to cope. You know, in the, in the working world today, you know, a lot of students have, when they get into the professional working world, they got to learn how to work with others. They have to work how to work under a boss or things like that. So there's a lot of skills we teach in the program, too, and we have a great time with that. Longtime teacher, long time work, well, the first two years working here at Antelope, how much of an advantage is the band to athletics here at Antelope? It's great. Actually, the school culture here is what actually attracted me a couple years ago to start teaching here. Um, having them involved within the athletics is so strong, and the community with our um, student government classes and stuff like that that we do all that, it's been great. So we really enjoy that. It's, 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 we work together really, really well. Thank you so much, Mark, for all you do. Again, Wood Creek 13, Antelope 14. We'll be right back. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, However many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back to the show. We're just about ready to open second half action here at Titan Stadium. We're at Antelope High School tonight for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week and a tight one we have for you. 14-13, the hosts on top, a blocked extra point. The difference in tonight's game, but I think Coach Domino, you would agree with me that we've seen a lot of heart from the visitors tonight coming in as definite underdogs. Well, definitely, they showed up, particularly in the second quarter. They were a little slow getting started, but once they did, they started to run that flex bone uh, option series. They run well. The dinger got warmed up. They started to open up some holes inside. They gained a little confidence, and if they can keep the big play from them, that's a key, and, uh, and not get their two-way players too tired. Okay, so that's a factor, but uh, they're well coached. They're sound and fundamentals, and of course, any kind you got that combo working for you uh, with with that Dinger Krupp. Why, uh, uh, certainly, they're the guidelines of this ball club. But they got a couple of decent wide receivers in Panlilio, and uh, Habermill, Habermill is uh, certainly a good one as well. And then the big tight end, and they've they've kept him in check pretty well. I think you raise a good point there, and I think we'll see more out of Wilford. And uh, don't know if that lower leg or ankle ding, you know, slowed yeah, him down a bit. This but, is true. But he's a gamer, and he'll be back for a lot more. A look at um, one revealing statistic compiled by Dave Larson. In total yardage for the half, Antelope racked up 239 and had a fair share of good-sized good plays. Wood Creek, 149 and... Most of that coming on two big plays. The run by Dinger after the long TD you mentioned with the very, very speedy Tyler Panlilio. Well, again, the reason of that discrepancy on 90 yard differential is Antelope had that ball early in, early in this contest. Wood Creek was three downs and punt and they didn't see much of that football in the first quarter. Now, once they got going in that second quarter is where they got the yards, and you're correct, and it, you know, two thirds of this or a third of it was, uh, was that big play. Let's join Lauren Goodman standing by with Coach Ray. Lauren? Coach, I'm here with Matt Ray. How did the halftime talk though? Good, made, we made a couple adjustments, hopefully uh, sure up a couple things, and make a couple corrections, but I thought we played pretty well in the first half. You know, we made a couple mistakes. We had a couple chances down there that I would have liked to capitalize a little bit better, but I, I thought our guys played pretty well. 
Anything that you think needs to stand out specific that your needs your team needs to immediately work on in the first few plays? Well, we gotta we gotta definitely execute on uh, short yardage situations. We, you know, we've had a hard time there, um, which we usually do a pretty good job. And then, you know, defensively, I think we've done pretty good except for those couple we got a couple big plays. So just making sure that we're tackling, sharing up, sharing up our reads as far as what they're doing. And you know, I think we'll be fine. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, Will. Thank you, Lauren. Coach Ray specifying short yardage situations, and we did see that Wood Creek interior defensive line after that initial few minutes in the quarter tighten things up. Well, they also, if you recall, Will, in the first quarter, a lot of those plays went for big yardage because of poor open field, non-wrapping up tackling in the first quarter. However, after that, we did see a lot more concerted effort for run support from the secondary guys. Very definitely. They had more people at the ball, on the ball, and that at the point of attack in that second quarter. No question about it. And they have to. Anytime you're going against backs like Roberts and Bradley and Thomas and Tally, all that speed, and not even counting Henley, who's a big time wide out threat. They've got lots of weapons, and the weapons we're speaking of are fast, shifty, and dangerous. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing because when we talk about depth, you know, Antelope's got four or five guys that go to the house, and then when these teams have to face Terry Stark's ball club, they're going to face five, six, seven, eight guys that can go to the house. And how many did you say have run the football for Intercom this year? 14 different ball carriers <laughs> this year. That, that must be a world record. Amazing. They have given the ball to 14 different backs this year. We are ready for the second half kickoff. It'll be Wood Creek doing the booting. Antelope will have first crack. They're sitting on top of a flimsy one-point lead, 14-13 in a hard fought game. Short, coming up fast, letting it bounce, a straight up bounce. Bradley finds a hole, steps away, works the sideline before he's shoved back. A nice return out to the 44. That move back to the outside really opened things up. That was exceptional. Mr. Bradley is earning his keep tonight. Well, he is. He's got speed. He's a gifted athlete, and uh, he certainly is a welcome addition to the, to the Antelope Titans. So they move the football forward to the 45, an extra yard there, first and 10 from there after the excellent run back. So here we go. Turn and give to Roberts. Works the right side, finds a hole, gets across midfield. About a seven well, yard run. If you see that play again, that off tackle, watch how many people pull for Antelope. I mean, they pull, it's like the City Hall pull. They pull at least three on that play. Roberts there, 33. He picked his way, he hasn't been touched yet. You see how many linemen are downfield? Second and three for the Titans after the seven yard run by Roberts. Again, shoved back as he got close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. Well, he ran into Mr. Castillo. And I'll tell you that, uh, you'll know when you run into him He's short, stocky, strong, and uh, I'll tell you, he's where the ball is. That looks like a first down to me. Um, let's see where they're going to. Okay, it is a first down. So Roberts picks up a tough three. And uh, something that has really impressed me about Roberts that I had not noticed on previous occasions, he's a terrific blocker. When he's not carrying, he finds somebody to knock down. Well, that's impressive, very impressive. First and 10 from the Wood Creek 45. Quick hit out to the right side, an immediate tackle. However, it's gonna be a nice little gain. Paulson with the grab. 
and can, they spot him at the 40. They continue to run that seven, six, seven, eight yard comeback or hitch. And I'll tell you, as long as those corners are gonna play three deep corners, watch this. Three step drop and you got yourself a nice six, seven yard gain. They're playing a three deep zone on them. And let's tell you, that's a lot of field. Carter Krupp with the hard tackle there. They come to the near side. And again, Robert's getting a good workout. He gets inside the 40 to the 39. Give him. Well, good containment there. Gain of one. Big Matt Wilford all over him. There you see off tackle Wolf, Krupp and Wolford show. That'll give you an idea of the hitting going on down there. Nice sideline audio on our replay. Third and four. Lucero fakes to the near side again. Big room, sideline burst. That looks like a touchdown to me. Touchdown Titans on a burst with big time speed right there. And we hadn't seen it previously. Brian Talley with the motor. Or is well, that Anderson? Anderson, Jamil Anderson. It surely is. Jamil Anderson really came around strong, number 22. From 39 and that Bad snap, but held and booted sweet at 9-10, early third. Here he comes. Boy, he showed a burst of speed. He ran by everybody. He ran by everybody. Peyton we'll be Allen right try back to catch for him. more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Antelope ready to kick off following a scintillating 39-yard speed burst. The extra point, however, off target. Both clubs now have failed on a PAT, so Wood Creek within that seven point range now. Well, this PATs could be very important down the wire, let me tell you. Uh, the way this game going very often could be, this could be a separation of the PAT point or field goal. Whistles are gonna kill this playoff. Don't know what they spotted. Offside, huh? Well, I would put our big guys, see, on the far side, uh, over there, right on the 45-yard line. That ball should be landing on the hash mark far side, 40-yard line. They'll kick again from the Antelope 35, our game referee, Ray Pulley, at the opposite end of the field on the goal line. Maybe he'll surprise us. Cover! To the opposite side, taken near the sideline. And a little tiptoe job there by Peyton Allen. A spirited run back and good field position upcoming for Carter Krupp and the Timberwolves offense. Well, Peyton Allen with a lot of effort on that far side. He was trapped early, but did get the ball back to 38 yard line where they start their drive. 20 to 13, antelope on top, but the lead is not safe. 
This is an important game in the CBC standings. Both these clubs trying to challenge Intercom. Krupp has been impressive on both sides of the football. Boy, oh boy, down the sideline and into the open. That fooled everybody. Dinger is going to go all the way. Along with everyone else in the stadium, I got faked on that play. That was some tremendous deception. Woo wee. Everything they told me about Dinger is true. And coaches have uh, told me during the week, this kid gets up the field. He's a downhill runner. And I tell you, he showed that. That was special. They pull within one point. Krupp on for the PAT to try to tie things up. That didn't take long at all. Spot, boot, on the way. No good. Another look at Dinger. There he is right there, breaking through the initial containment. Look at him use his blockers. Oh, get off me, don't start grabbing me. Okay, so another botched PAT, two out of three. Tonight by Wood Creek, it leaves the T-Wolves a point short. Trailing 20 to 19, despite the 62 yard touchdown run by Dinger, who adds to his total in the first half. He had a 43 yard burst before a touchdown run from close in and now a 62. So he's well over 100. Yeah, we're early in the third quarter here. It's once again, what I'm seeing here is these two, this is a big game. We said that from the onset, Will, and they're both playing that way. It just seems like uh, we're getting a little peaks and valleys here. We've got this burst and we got a, a bit of a let up either by somebody's D or O. Now let's see how Antelope responds. Well, what they thought may have been a nice little cushion is gone. They're still on top, but just by a hair. Touch back on a long kickoff this time out to the 20. So they'll have to take the long road this time, opening from their 20 yard line. There you see Nathan Lucero with coach Matt Ray behind him and that Titan offense and we'll see what play he pulls out of his playbook this time. Again, it'd be interesting here because the two way players on these teams and there's a number of them on both squads. They can't afford to take a break here. Under center Lucero. Nice deception on that play, and it's nearly a first down carry. Well, there's Quavante Thomas, and he's known for his blocking, but I'll tell you what, when he does carry the football, and going into tonight's game, he only had 13 carries, but he's had two good carries tonight where he's carried people. Panlilio with the tackle on that play. Left side running. Roberts has got some running room. First down and more. And a hard shot along the sideline. And one of the Timberwolves is down in pain. Well, it looks like linebacker Danny Castillo, he bounces up. Okay, hold on to yourselves. Here comes a replay with sideline audio. It looked like a shoulder, a hard fall on a shoulder maybe. I think Danny's going to be fine. He's a real warrior. I'm telling you that. He will be back in this contest. First down for the Titans at their own 38. 
18 on the pickup by Roberts. Short drop, look left. There's a hookup. Nice, effective play. Toby with the grab. Once again, they pick up about eight, seven or eight on that hitch. Here's another look. Toby with the sure hands. And Krupp up to help shove him out along with Peyton Allen. Second and three. Off the near hash mark, they shift I formation. And a penalty marker flies. Tight end Sullivan moving. So that makes it a second and eight now from the Titan 40. We're nearing midway third. Both clubs have hit big touchdowns. However, the special team PAT department has been shabby tonight. A pair of extra points botched by Wood Creek and one by Antelope. Near side running. Not a lot there. And you think Roberts made the most out of what was possible. Oh, he got the penalty yards back. Have a look at this. Here they come. Sweep left. Love pulling line. Roberts picks up a couple of tough yards. Those were tough yards right there, no question, to be sure. Big play, third and three. Now, uh, they're a running ball club. However, let's look at how the corners play the wide receivers. This is very important. They look like they're in a run type offense, though. Play fake, Lucero to throw, chase and goes to a secondary receiver and has a hookup out there. Wow, nice that, improvising by yes. Nathan Lucero on that pass to Thomas. Wow, that was just tremendous effort on Lucero. I agree with you. He was trapped, nowhere to go. Nathan Lucero faking, buying time, rolling out, and lets it go. And he comes back to the ball. Good job by Thomas. A key first down for the Titans to keep the drive alive. They're at midfield as we reach the flip side of quarter number three, 545 and rolling. Antelope by one. Low snap, he's down to get it. Fire left, a hookup on the money. And a broken tackle. That was an exceptional individual effort turned in right there. I'll tell you, we don't see that too often. Henley has had a number of excellent touches tonight. He has. Um, there's a, 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 and really, if you watch this very closely, I've said it all night long, they can run this play any time they want, five to seven. Look at this. Krupp has him for a moment, and he breaks this tackle, and then Krupp recovers to come back and finally put an end to it. But if you'll notice, there's a lot of, what we call arming going on. Good hole, broken tackle, Roberts is loose. 35-30, chased. A cut back at the 10. He's in deep in the red zone. Wow. That's a great run by Roberts. Mahari Roberts. Roberts with a big run. Ooh wee. Well, I tell you this. Uh, he, he made some great moves there. But previous to that, for two or three plays, watch this Roberts here. Inside, keeps his feet moving, bounces it out. Now it's a foot race. Max and Page is after him, but he cuts inside of him. Picks up another four or five. That's a 38-yard run by Roberts. They give it to him, and he's hit shy of the goal line and shoved back. He might have got to the one. Well, it's, it's good hard running by these antelope backs, but uh, we've seen some really arm tackling in the open field by Wood Creek, and it's hounding them this quarter, Will. 
It really is. We've seen excellent running, and it should be noted that it's too bad we'll not see Keith Brown, who was injured earlier in the season. Another fine running back. A blast off the left side. Touchdown, Titans! As Roberts gets in for a well-deserved touchdown carry. Back down the field come the Titans. 26-19. I thought they might try for a two spot, but nothing doing there. Spotted, booted, Ben Moreno on target at 344. Late third, 27-19 Antelope as we go to break. Here's Roberts crashing in. Don't wander off, this game's still warming up. Twenty-seven, nineteen. Both clubs trading salvos here in the third quarter. Antelope most recently stretching out now to their eight-point lead as both clubs have had trouble in the PAT department, but not that last time. Ben Moreno punching it home. Will they pooch or will they go deep, Will? Let's take it on the deep. They do. Backpedaling at about the seven-yard line. Let's see what the Wolves can make out of this. And the T-Wolves get a Peyton Allen run back for slightly above average field position. And we'll see what Carter Krupp and the T-Wolves offense can do. And they're down by eight. A nice downfield coverage applied that time by Joseph Guerrero. Krupp and Dinger show. Let's see what they'll come up with here. You've got to really pay attention to both of them because Krupp can fake it and fake it well, and Digger can carry people on his back. From the 23-yard line. Dinger, they were waiting for him that time, and he blasts out with well, a little line surge. They were waiting for him, but he had no push from the front five. None. Well, perhaps that fatigue factor you referenced taking hold here late in the third. Well, this is true when you've got to contain speed and uh, play two ways as a number of these guys are. Gain of two, second and eight from the 25. Krupp wants to throw, looks right and fires. Has a connection to the 30, but tackled immediately and shut down on the play. But they do have a nice pickup from Habermail on the reception. Tough on defense, Henley. That was on target. Habermail, number 15, key third and three. Will the Dinger carry it up the middle? Or will Carter Krupp keep the football? He might keep or he might dish it, but he's a riverboat gambler, unafraid. He kept and ducked and they're out nearly to the 40 yard line. How about that? Well, we know this, that they're both clutch players and Carter Krupp can move the chains. Excellent, excellent, he, he played that just terrific, great fake to Dinger inside, and they kept that ball and protected the football. 
So they spotted at the 39 yard line, just under two minutes remaining here in the third. Krupp and company on the move. Down by eight, here's a toss. Bobbles, and picked up on the dead run for nearly first down yardage. Wow, what a recovery by Peyton Allen. Pen Lilio Pen with a Lilio. great. Yes, Tyler Pen Lilio, who's broke one earlier, made a remarkable recovery. Perfect bounce. Perfect bounce. There you see him almost kick it away, but a nice bounce back up. Okay, makes nine out of a busted play. They need well, even less than a yard here. Well, let's see your Riverboat Gambles with a play action pass here. Double wide receivers to the far side. No gamblet. Just give it a dinger. Dinger moves the chains. That's all he needed was a half yard. Well, he's the one to give it to. First and ten. At the midfield stripe. Less than a minute to go. Clock rolling here. Late third. Well, Coach Domino, um, is Krupp going to bite off a little more this time? Well, I think so. There's that quick hit. And Lilio detained and dropped. The difference was that Habermill missed his block. When Penn Lilio scored before on that long run, Habermill laid a great block. If we saw this again, this time it was only two yards. There you are, coach. There it is. Right to Penn Lilio and a nice play by their corner, unblocked. 10 seconds to go. Let's see if they get off a play. Second and eight from the Antelope 48. They do not get the playoff, and we have played three, but don't dare wander off. This game is up for grabs, and it's a doozy. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Well, here's what else is going on around the CBC tonight. And in the third quarter of each of those games, Intercom continuing to dominate, as is Yuba City. Both clubs looking for a win after tonight's action. Roseville taking the night off. Larry Cunha pulling the Tigers together. But right here, we got 27-19 Antelope. Here's Wood Creek trying to get something cranked up and a nice second effort burst there to prevent a loss on the play and get something out of that. Dinger, a tough, tough back. He is, he had, he had, he had a tackler in his face right at the handoff and he still managed to pick up another three or four, giving him third and three will. Again, a great effort with no hole. At the Antelope 43 yard line, we're just underway here in the fourth quarter. And this has been a very entertaining game, intense and hard fought. And we've seen some extraordinary plays as referee Ray Pulley to the near sideline for a brief chat with Antelope head coach Matt Ray. They're looking up at the clock for some reason. Meantime, both clubs at the line of scrimmage ready to rock on a key third and three from the Titan 43. Triple wide right. Inside running. 
and they're going to be short. Yeah, he's short a yard and a half, almost two. And I'm a little surprised that they went with, I, I know Dinger moves the chains, but that was tough yardage. There was no get off, Will. Fourth down upcoming. Brian Frank with the key stop there for the Titans. And we're looking at fourth and three, no gain. Well, he acts like he's brought in the punt team, but he's brought in a lot of people here. And with a triple threat like Carter Crop punting, uh, don't take it for granted. Look at this formation. All right, roll the dice. Here we go. A surge there. Oh, my goodness. I believe that'll be uh, a five-yard assessment. On the defense, five-yard penalty results in a first down. Oh, boy. Well, you're going to see that play again where they line up in the eye. 11 guys line up in the eye. And you're going to see it for a two-point play later. And they may need one. Okay. At the Antelope 38. First and 10, fresh set of downs for Krupp and company. And Antelope did not want to do that. That was a gift. Go get him! Krupp wants to throw. He throws behind his receiver. Don't know if that was a mix up. But Haber mailed the intended receiver on a slant and the ball thrown behind him. Well, I, I just think that was, uh, you know, not done on purpose. The back, there was no reason for throw back shoulder when he's wide open. And then Haber Mill lost his footing on top of it all. So he was wide open for an eight yard game. Second and 10, clock stopping at the 10 14. We're early here in the fourth. Antelope dropping seven people in the coverage. They're dropping seven. Four man front. He fakes and keeps and gets blasted and shoved back. Not, not a hand was laid on Dinger coming through the line. An avalanche of antelope tacklers. Wow. Well, you know, they gave him a couple on the play, yeah. but it's going to be a third and eight. Krupp would like to have that back and give the ball a dinger on their option. From the Antelope 36 yard line. Okay, they got that pick play to Penn Lilly on the far side. They throw out there. They've got the play they want, but it's well defended. Three tacklers shoved Panlilio out of bounds, led by Henley. Well, Antelope scores a lot, but their defense is playing excellent this year, and you can see part of the reason why, because they put pressure on opposing quarterbacks. 19 sacks accumulated for this Titans defense. Franco with four of them to lead the pack. And you see five other guys with two apiece. And there's a few others with one each, 19 sacks. Back to throw Krupp, left side, a catch and an immediate tackle, but it looks like first down yardage on a key reception by Saparovic. You haven't heard much on about Johnny Saparovic tonight. And he uh, makes a key catch there to move the chains. Yes, nice, well done by Krupp. Three-step drop, goes to Superovich on the turn in, moving the chains. Luke Paulson a little late getting over, makes the tackle, gain of 11 though, and a fresh set of downs for Krupp and company. Working from the 25, he keeps, steps away from one man, but he's contained and dropped. Maybe a yard on that. Once again, a fake to Dinger and a keeper not getting much. It looks like their defense is pretty much geared in the containing Krupp and willing to give a few yards to Dinger. Let's take a look at Carter Sullivan, number seven on this play. 
Yeah, with a lot of help from four. Sullivan was at the bottom, though, and had him around the ankles. So gain of one, second and nine, clock rolling, 7.39, fourth. Short drop, look left, fire left. There's a hookup. A big catch there, broken tackle. Near the five, where he shoved out of bounds. And we were waiting to see when his number would be called again, Matt Wilford. Well, he's a big target, and I don't think we've seen enough of him, really. I'll tell you, he is a load. Wilford with a quick turn in and get off me and picks up an additional eight, nine yards. Boy, they gave him a huge cushion on that. First in goal from the four. Left side running near the goal line. Boy, they quick counted. That was a quick play. Watch them, they may do it again. Dinger got most of it, but just shy. Here's another look. That's Lead a block. Wow. wow, gee whiz. Uh, did he break the plane? Uh, that's what I'm asking right now. Did he break the plane? They say no. So length of the football outside, quick snap, power plus. Krupp Touch for the keeper. Down Timberwolves. Krupp sneaking home on another quick count. At 6.52 of the fourth, that tightens things up again. 27-25, when are they gonna go for two, coach? Well, uh, it's early in this ball game, but I thought they'd come out in the eye and go for two. They're gonna go for two, but I'm surprised they're not in that 11-man eye. Well, we got a stoppage and a timeout. Perhaps Matt Ray wants to realign his defense. Let's take another look at the goal line play for six. That was an easy money there. Yes, it was easy money because you had a great push by Reinig, Erskine, Romero, Jenkins, and Ordaz. Great push up front. Well, this is the kind of a game that we were hoping we would get tonight. There was a lot of factors con to consider, but some of those factors were in alignment with what we're getting right now. Very definitely here. We're coming down the wire with a long six minutes to go, and a lot can happen, but these two teams match up real well. And I'll tell you something, you got speed, but uh, I think Wood Creek has got a little balance to more speed than we thought they had. And uh, power inside the tackles with both Krupp and Dinger. Um, decent wide receivers. What's your call here, coach? Well, I think they'll I think they'll run that that single single side get the ball up high to 15. Here we go. They're going for two to try to tie, show some motion. Again back the other way. Krupp rolls, looks, he's in trouble, breaks a tackle and runs it in, I believe. I thought he got in. I did too, but they're not gonna give it to him. He comes up just short and Krupp. Here we go, Krupp's keeping it. Hard to tell from there, but it's no good and Antelope able to hold on to a two point lead in this Excellent ball game. Let's check with Lauren Goodman. She has an update for us, Lauren. Well, Will, I want us to pay attention to injuries on both sides. Both teams are dealing with major cramps. You see players, multiple players playing on both sides of the ball, and they are continuously trying to work with the student athletes to get these cramps out and massage them and do whatever they need to do. So hopefully, hopefully we will get and see if that will impact the game going forward. Back to you guys. Thank you, Lauren. Well, it should be noted here, based on some excellent statistics compiled by Dave Larson, Wood Creek's four scoring drives have covered 64, 63, 62, and 77. Antelope's four scoring drives, 79, 65, 55, and 80. 
Those are long drives. Time consuming long drives. Yes. And we said early in this football game, one of our keys was Krupp and Dinger moving the chains in clock management. Yes, indeed, those were your keys. And what do you suppose we saw tonight so far? On the money as usual, Krupp booming a kickoff back to the one yard line. And they're gonna bring it back. Broken tackle on a straight arm, another broken tackle. How about that, Anderson again? No, who we got this time? That looks like uh, Tally. Well, Tally, uh, number 23, Tally, Brian Tally. Now, if we see that, you're gonna see a lot of open field misses because they're not driving their legs and wrapping up over. We've seen it over and over again tonight. They're trying to make the tackle too high and they're susceptible to straight arm shove offs. Gotta be below the waist. I just, you, you got to wrap up and drive those legs here. Okay, Antelope on the attack. Boom. Tough yardage, a one or a two yard gain. Now, what? What uh, Coach Ray has to go into, even though there are six minutes in the game, you gotta go into what you call your four minute offense. Four minute offense, look a look at this. And he picks up a couple of tough yards, four minute O, five minute O, where you move the chains, you take your time in and out of the huddle wheel, and you just try to use only a play to two plays per minute. Let's see if they can do it. Well, I'll tell you, Roberts is a tough back. A couple of carries there and consecutive stops turned in by excellent safety, Max Page. Right, let's look at Roberts driving inside and Ray is trying to control. There's Roberts with very tough yards. But watch Ray control the clock from the sidelines here. He's telling him when to break the huddle, okay? From the Antelope 45, clock rolling at 525, fourth quarter, and a stoppage of play. Well, that's okay. He milked that clock to the maximum. Well, we want to remind you of a couple of things, including what we have up our sleeve for next week's coverage as we promote the October 12th matchup on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the weekend. It'll feature more Titans hot, hot on the trail as the Burbank Titans visit Monterey Trail on the hometown sports game of the week. Burbank always tough, Monterey Trail having a superior year. TJ Ewing's ball club is undefeated, Will, one of the top teams in the city. Well, that's one you won't want to miss. Monterey Trail, dynamite ball club there. As you see part of that antelope sideline, the Titans nursing a two point lead that is not safe as they're gonna try to grind out first downs and eat up the rest of this time. Now the corners are playing very tight on the wides, you notice. Another stoppage. Coach Ray called another timeout. How about that? Well, I think he was going to that quick hitch, and now he didn't expect those corners to be pressing. Okay, he did not expect press coverage on the corners. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. There's a look at that antelope sideline. Matt Ray with the white cap has his offense together with a third and four upcoming from their own 45 yard line. This has been a give and take football game. Each club changing, trading punches. Largest lead of eight at one time. Yeah. 
So here we go, ready to roll. From the 45, they need to make the 49. He wants to throw, everybody covered, he's flushed and sacked. Back at the 37. Oh, daddy. Big loss on the play. And that was a key defensive play made possible by excellent coverage in the secondary. Another look. Let's take a look at this back. Lucero nowhere to go under heavy pressure and great coverage in the secondary. And I'll tell you, that's a big defensive play by Wood Creek and credit Santiago Camp with a big rush. Tough coverage in that secondary with Krupp, Page, and Allen covering. Fourth and 10. Punt formation shown by the Titans. Single safety back for the Timberwolves. High but short. And Page lets it roll and it takes a huge antelope roll down at about the 16 or 17 yard line. So here it is. First and 10, a key stop. And we'll see what Carter, Krupp, and company have up their sleeves. Well, they got a long way to go. You got an 81-yard field in front of Wood Creek. Let's see what they can do with the football. Krupp and company. They toss and come wide left. There's the speed merchant, Panlilio. Runs it across the 30 and nearly makes the 35. Speed to burn. Panlilio with that counter coming back. Excellent call, moving the chains. First and 10. At the 35. Pan Lily all the Wide other way. right this time. Thanks, coach. Not as much. Clock rolling at the 405. We're not getting a signal here. Let's take another look. They toss and go wide right. Wow, major penalty against Antelope is changing the complexion of this possession. Ball, personal foul on the defense. 15 yards, results, first down. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's being heavily disputed by the defensive coordinator for Coach Ray. Well, that's a 15-yard penalty at midfield with just a shade under four minutes remaining. Wood Creek on the move. Krupp fires over the middle and he's got a grab. An outstanding catch. Guess who? Well, the big fella Wilford, he's got to be right where he's supposed to be. And I'll tell you what, it's a major catch. He got the ball up. Big. He got to get it up high. Another look after that catch by Matt Wilford, extending all the way. Finally wrapped up in the secondary by Brian Talley. So from the Antelope 42, second and two. Well, a little mix up in the backfield there. Um, a little confusion there between uh, Dingman and Krupp. And of course, they're using Panlilio in motion now. They get the first down anyway. First and 10, clock rolling at the three minute mark. We're coming down to cases and don't forget, we're gonna be naming our players of the game 
in the post game, and Lauren Goodman will be interviewing those special players in our post game segment. Here's a toss, left side running. Panlilio steps through. He found an opening and darted through there and got about five on the play. Well, he's a little guy, but I tell you, he plays big. You know, he's just outstanding in his hustle. 5'8", 140 pounds soaking wet. Boy, he plays big. 2.20 to go, clock rolling. Lots of time being expended here as Krupp awaits a decision from the sideline on the next play call. Well, they want to score, but take use the total clock. 2.06. Turn and give, they blast ahead for a five yard gain to the 30. Dinger, the workhorse. They're using that clock wisely. The coaches are not in a hurry with third and a matter of inches right now. Here they come with their special eye formation. A minute and a half to go, clock rolling. There's no urgency shown here. They blasted ahead for a first down. Let's see about a timeout. They stop it with 123 to move the chains. And now a timeout. Okay, let's rock. 1.23 to go. First down for Wood Creek. They're down by two. They need a score of some kind. Back to throw, look right and fire out there, bat it down. That's a great play by number seven, Sullivan. Tremendous play by that defensive end. Well, he read Krupp's eyes on that one. Second and 10. 121 to go. Carter Sullivan, standout offensively, defensively, a real presence out there, as you can see. Oh, he's had a great game. Plays both two sides of the football. Doesn't take much time off. Nothing doing. That's a great job by the Antelope defense. He faked it to Dinger and got gobbled. He certainly did. Once again, they're paying more attention to Krupp than Dinger right now during this series. Well, they call another timeout as well they should. Just a minute 13 to go. Now they're looking third and 10. Brian Frank comes up with a big stop. So they got two downs. They can, of course, still get a first down, but 113 to go is looking big. I think that uh, once again, if he doesn't throw, takes the deep snap, will he runs that option fake and throws off it? Okay, let's see how they align here. All right, he's taking it out of the gun. Okay, third and 10, hold on to yourselves. And he sends Dinger in motion and tries to run it and gets next to nothing. Wow, fourth and 10, no game, fourth and 11. 
Well, to me, he looked at Dinger, and I thought he was going to throw the quick swing, okay? And then he decided to keep it. Timeout. He had a trip set on the far side, and they were all throwing blocks for Dinger, okay? Fourth and 12, we're keeping it right here. Wood Creek. Well, evidently, Carter Krupp badly injured on that last hit. He's being attended to, as you see on the sideline, with a cut on his forehead, apparently. Let's take another look, because he got tagged hard right here. Well, he got kind of necktied. Ooh. He got necktied and landed, and then the second man got a piece of him. There's where the injury occurred when he hit his head and, and he got his helmet knocked off. Nice replay, guys. What I don't understand is what Coach Ray is in the middle of the field. So Carter Krupp, gee whiz, what a warrior, coming back out onto the field, patched up, possibly dazed, fourth down. Well, he's the man that can come up with the big plays. Let's see if he's got one here on fourth and 12. He's gonna have to throw for it. Rolling, firing for the end zone. Alley-oop time, incomplete. A valiant effort, well defended. Bradley, part of the coverage out there. And Wilford in the end zone, trying for the leaping grab. Wood Creek at this point has fired its last salvo coming up just shy. Well, we got two kneels and it's over. Kneel one and kneel two. Matt Ray, I'm sure, is uh, reminding his ball club of kneel one, kneel two. And here we'll have an excellent demonstration, I'm sure. <laughs> He won't be uh, throwing with 10 seconds prior to the half. No. There's Neil one. An excellent football game. Hard fought. Clearly an indication of the strength in this league. And Antelope again, looking as if it's gonna hang on for a narrow victory like their 21-20 over Eba City. And they're 22-20 over Rockland. This is another one right down to the wire. Credit them for being clutch in the clutch. Clock at 20 seconds. Snap, kneel. And it's almost James Cagney time. Count them off. And this is going to be a 27 to 25 antelope victory in a thriller here at Titan Stadium. And as James Cagney says, the examination's over. And in the total yardage department compiled by Dave Larson, antelope 370, Wood Creek 340, just about as close as that final score. That's it, and PATs were a factor in this football game, and we said it. It would be a factor in this game. That's what turned it. That was the significant difference in a seesaw battle and in a game where no team took a two-score lead. The largest lead was eight in this game. And sportsmanship and respect as we see the Titan Band saluting their Warriors as they Walk the gauntlet with the Wood Creek Warriors. A splendid ball game, Coach Domino. Well, we expected it, and we got it.
And sometimes you expect those types of contests and you don't get it, but I'll tell you, these teams were matched up, contrasting styles. Uh, and uh, Wood Creek, having been in that strong SFL league for years and years and years, coming in now to, you know, uh, the CVC type of thing, which is a new league. And, and uh, Antelope playing year in, year out, playing a tough schedule, probably one of the toughest non-league schedule that, they, that Coach Ray has had ever. As, as a matter of fact, he uh, confirmed that. It, is, it has been his toughest non-league competition since he started 11 years ago. And that, of course, lined up Rockland and Capital Christian and Folsom. Yep. About as tough as they come. They do, yeah. Well, we're going to step away for a moment, but encourage you to stay with us when we return in our post-game segment. Lauren Goodman will be visiting with our players of the game and the winning coach in tonight's contest. We'll be right back. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. your will but however loud the loudness gets however many cheese puffs may fly you're the driver the one in control stand firm just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive never give up till they buckle up the verdict is in and the decision is final this evening here in Antelope at Titan Stadium where tonight host Antelope in a squeaker of a well-played CBC matchup took out Wood Creek by a final count of 27 to 25. We have selected our players of the game and well deserved a pair for each team for victorious Antelope running back Mahari Roberts and two-way guy Carter Sullivan and for visiting Wood Creek special quarterback Carter Crump and one heck of a running back Grant Dinger. Lauren Goodman is standing by with the Antelope players of the game and the winning coach. Well, I'm here with Antelope. Will, like you said, guys, you did a great performance. Players of the game. I got a defensive guy and an offensive guy. So let me start with a defensive guy. Two-way player out there just trying to make plays. What are you thinking about when you're out there on the field? Um, they got some guys. Uh, they had a good uh, edge on the uh, offensive side, but we kept, we kept fighting. We knew what they were doing. Um, we had a good idea what was going to happen, and we reacted, and it kept us in the game, and we won. We knew it was going to be a hard game, but we fought through it, and we won. 
that's why we had a tough preseason schedule and it got us ready for this moment. So you talked about tough preseason schedule. Now you came in with a tough big play right there in the last two minutes on the quarterback. What was going through your mind? I knew uh, I got chewed out on the sideline and I knew how I had to go in and do something and that's what happened. How do you and your team going to carry from this win and going on for the finish the season out? I think it's a great momentum. Um, we already were on a four game winning streak and I think it's going to help us. We got a couple, we got good teams coming up and I think we're ready. We Thank you, prepared. Carter. Good Thank luck you. on the rest of the season. Now I'm here with Mahari Roberts. Mahari, you were juking, flying out yeah. there, just making breaks. How do you do it? You know, it's just uh, off, -season off season practice time. Uh, during the off season, you know, I, I put in a lot of hard work, uh, worked on my weaknesses from last year, and that's just how I got here right now. So you came through, offense was kind of staggering, going back and forth. You had some big yardage runs, 40-plus yard runs, cutting back across the field. How important is it to your team to get you going offensively? Uh, it's really important. You know, uh, we got a good line and we got a good back, so uh, we use a term called ice pick, and uh, that's basically going down the field and uh, just being, a, being a t the team down mentally and physically. So that's that's how important it is, and that's what we did. That's Can you kind of tell me, a players from the players' perspective, that emotion coming in as your defense made those last stops at the end for you guys to win the game? Oh, that was that was amazing. That was probably the most, the the best time of my life. I don't. It's like no words can even explain how great it was. That when uh, they stopped it, I just this joy came out of my heart. Thank you so much, Mahari. Good luck on the rest of your season. Thank you. you too. So now I'm here with the Wood Creek players of the game and I'm going to start with the quarterback kind of bleeding here yeah. you played an amazing game gave it all out there how are you feeling right now I mean it sucks coming out here and we played our heart out we did the best we could and just wasn't in our favor at the end of the game so props to up for that one tough game as you talked about when you were coming into the game how did Wood Creek feel as you being one of their leaders I mean, we were coming off a terrible loss to Intercom, so kind of had a chip on our shoulders to get back out there and just go. And I think we did that. We hustled the ball, and we had a very physical practice leading up to it. Tough player out here. Obviously, the blood's on your, yeah. on your jersey right now. How truly tough is this league, and how has it prepared you to this point? I mean, we played in the SFL, so we've seen tough teams, and it's nothing different here. you got to battle. you got to prepare every, every week, and goal is to go 1-0, and we didn't get that this week, so we got to prepare even harder. How is your team, or how are you going to help your team bounce back going into next week? I mean, being a quarterback on this team, you got to be a leader. you got to be doing the right things off the field to be able to do the right things on the field. So, I mean, just getting back in the classroom, sudden film up, and looking to go 1-0 next week. And I'm standing here with one of your favorite targets or your duo. How important is your relationship, and how are you two going to work together to bring your team back from this week? He's a junior and should have been up on varsity last year, but... He's just grinded his butt to get to this point. And our running backs, they've gotten hurt almost every other week. And he's the one that stuck through it. He's fighting through shoulder pain. So mad props to him. And just practice, just getting our mesh down and getting that connection back. Good game tonight. Good luck on the rest of the season. Well, you making running plays, big running back out there, trying to just do it all for your team. How does that help Wood Creek? Um, I mean, we run the Veer. The Veer is a high run offense, so having uh, a good running back is important, but most importantly, it's the line. The line, uh, they did a fantastic job. Carter had a bunch of time, I had a bunch of holes, and uh, it, it, we just didn't work in our favor tonight. We're going to come back next week. So you talked about your line, and every running back knows how important those line is, but hitting those holes, you were making big holes for big runs. How do you prepare coming into a game playing against Antelope? Um, I mean, you just got to get mentally checked in. Our coaches do a good job of uh, throughout the day getting us checked in, and uh, it's a very important a mental – the mental aspect of the game is very important to us, and we take it very seriously. So you see your team. You were coming down there on the last drive. I kind of want to see how was the Wood Creek huddle and how are you guys feeling coming in trying to go on that fourth down play? Yeah, it, it's tough. It's uh, it's tough being down in that, in that situation. Um, we, we have the playmakers to make plays like that happen, and we just uh, didn't connect, and we're not done. We're going to come back next week. Responding to next week, thank yep. you so much. Good luck thank in you. this game. Thank you. I have the winning coach here for the Titans. Hey, hey. Coach, pulled it out, we did. and we got to talk about the end of the game. End of the game, All obvious, right. a lot of pressure. The last five minutes, talk to me about what your huddle was going through and how was the communication in that. Well, honestly, you know, we pride ourselves on being able to finish that out without having to give the ball back to the other team. We had an opportunity to go down and 
and execute our four minute drill, which we practice and, and be able to, you know, kind of put it away so it's not really as uh, suspenseful. So um, we weren't able to do that and execute that. So something we're going to have to address this week and continue to get better. But unbelievably proud of our defense uh, to come up with the, with the players that they have and especially what they do uh, the, uh, offensively scheme with the quarterback. They, they put a lot of pressure on you because, you know, they can, he can run and that obviously adds a, a major uh, aspect to their game and the, with the veer. Um, so I was just proud that we were able to withstand that charge and then make the plays when we had to. We've, you know, it's we've been we've played an unbelievably tough schedule, and you know we've lost we lost two games by by really two or three plays, and we were in a situation where we didn't make those plays. We were in a situation where we 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 failed to 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 get off the field or make the play. So that was all the reason why we scheduled that. We we've been successful the last few years, and when, for us to get over the hump, we needed to play those games and be in those games all the time. So when we got in these situations, it wasn't a surprise. And you know, Wood Creek is a, is a program that's that's continually gotten better. Um, you know, they were they were hard pressed, put in the SFL for as long as they've had, but they've always been good. Um, and he's you know, Coach Towers and his staff has done a great job over there of getting them to where you know they're at this level you know and I'm just unbelievably proud of our kids on senior night to be able to get out here and, and to win and you know at one point we're one and three and now we're five and three and and you know and and you know heading into the you know an unbelievably talented intercom team this was a huge win for our guys and our in our program and you know and hopefully that will that'll put us into having a you know a great week so that we can have a great uh you know have a great week next week coach thank you so much let you go All right thank you thank you so much you back to you will Thank you, Lauren. Certainly, Coach Ray, very, very happy and appreciative of this victory. He didn't get his four-minute drill executed properly, but the defense held. Well, I did when it counted. And um, coming down a wire, you give credit to Wood Creek. It's tough. Uh, they, they, you know, tonight they had four long drives. So did Antelope. And this time, the big drive of the game, they marched down there and they got down close to the red zone and then they couldn't cash it in. Suddenly that antelope uh, defense rose to the occasion and came through with key stops on Krupp as well as Dinger and slowed uh, that Wood Creek attack down. That's too bad because those two kids really carry that ball club. Well, carry indeed and certainly not the end of the season for Wood Creek, but now they're behind the eight ball uh, trailing as far as their conference championship hopes are concerned. And for Antelope, this tough victory tonight, setting the stage for a huge meeting next week when they lock up with the league leading Intercom Tigers. Well, it does. It sets them up. It sets them up big time. Uh, they're going to have to not make mistakes and bring their A game when they go to play uh, Intercom because they are loaded. They are loaded, and uh, believe me, they're going to have their hands full, but give Coach Ray credit for pulling this game out tonight and leading them on into that big game versus Terry Stark and his crew. Well, let's see what else is going on around the area for our CBC matchups. It's a final score in both of those battles. Intercom tossing another shutout, 43 zip over River Valley and Yuba City piling it up on the Bella Vista Broncos, a big 70 for the Honkers as they prevail easily. Roseville has the night off. They'll be back at it next week. So essentially the CBC is boiled down to Intercom, Antelope, and now Wood Creek a long shot. But an outstanding performance tonight by both teams. The intensity was the impressive thing for me, and the individual standouts, just very impressive, Coach. Very. Both teams brought it. Great crowd. Antelope always has a great following, great band, great uh, parent support, great team support, etc. Great uh, spectator support. It just... Um, they really do. It's a pleasure to come over here in a little because of the spirit and the support in this community. It's fantastic. So, you know, Terry Ray has done a great job with his staff here year in, year out. They're in a new conference, but certainly uh, this is no picnic for Intercom. Uh, they're having a great year, but they're coming down the wire and Wood Creek and Antelope. Uh, excuse me, Intercom, Yuba City, River Valley all have to meet and get it all settled. I still feel Intercom is, uh, is, is that notch above unless, uh, you know, somebody uh, upsets them and proves otherwise. Yes, they will have to prove it, certainly, and that uh, remains in doubt on who can do that. Another quick reminder, next week we will 
as you see our graphic here, we'll have more Titans and be hot on the trail. That's Burbank Titans at Monterey Trail. Same time, same station on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Monterey Trail has one of the elite ball clubs in the area. Don't want to miss that one. But here tonight in Antelope, in the Thriller, host Antelope, the Titans hanging on to a 27-25 victory against a valiant Wood Creek Timberwolves ball club in a CBC matchup so important in the standings. That being said, many thanks to the Antelope High School administration for their cooperation and assistance with our broadcast arrangements in tonight's contest. And a reminder that the Hometown Sports Game of the Week is a special sports presentation of Access Sacramento in association with play-by-play -play sports productions. For the Imperator, Jim Domino, Lauren Goodman, our game director, Nick Dunn, and the entire Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast crew, I'm Will James. We thank you for joining us, and as always, look forward to the next occasion when we can get together. From Titan Stadium, Antelope High, so long, everyone. This program from Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension 0. This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. This program is funded in part by a grant from the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission.